Hello guys and welcome to our sixth tutorial of series two. In this lesson, we're going to be making a bedside cabinet. Now we have looked at creating objects mainly using shapes and the extrude modifier. But in this lesson, we're going to be using a more basic creation method, which I reckon is pretty good for beginners. We'll be simply putting boxes together and then we'll try and create something out of it. Now I'll show you another way on part two of tutorial six. So there'll be two parts to this tutorial as we'll be creating the same thing by exploring different methods. So let's get started by going over to 3D Studio Max. Now this is something I've just created quickly to show you how easy it is. This has taken me like five minutes to do. If you compare with what we have here, there isn't much difference. So what I'm now going to do is delete this and we're gonna start from scratch. So just go ahead and hit delete. Go back to all my viewports. Go over to the create tab on the command panel. So hit that, select box. And then from the top view, just click and drag. Make sure it's not too big. I think if you make it too big, it won't be that nice. So something around there and just raise it up to maybe here. When you look there, it should be all right. If there are any problems where you want to adjust it further, just go ahead and play around with, uh, with these parameters and that should be all right. So I'm gonna undo because I, I was happy with mine. Whoops, just redo. I think I went a bit too far. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Go over to your select and move tool. And as soon as these arrows pop up, hold down shift, click on the red arrow and drag that allows us to copy. So this is how you copy things or clone things on 3D Studio Max. As soon as you let go, that box comes up asking you whether you want to copy it, create an instance or a reference. In this case, we just want to copy, press OK. So that's what we have so far. Go ahead and do the same, but this time we want to use the select and rotate tool. As soon as you do that, hold down shift and click and rotate on the outer line which should be kind of great as soon as you do that that gets highlighted in uh, yellow and as you rotate you'll notice we're literally creating a new shape and just try and arrange it as well as you can there say okay so what you should be looking at really is this part here it should be 90 for it to be 100 percent accurate see how those numbers are changing so um if you didn't quite get there just type in 90 press enter and that aligns it for you so now we're going to go back to the select and move tool just go ahead and move this try and arrange it as well as you can by clicking and dragging don't forget you can zoom in into any viewport so this is what we have um, go over to the modifier panel and just increase uh, the size so that we meet there. If you don't want to do that, you can always use the select and uniform scale. That does it quicker, so you can mess about with it. Uh, if not, you just go over to your uh, modifier panel and then play around with the numbers here. Play around with these arrows and that will allow you to, uh, to control it further. So... I'll leave that there. When we render, no one will be able to tell whether these are accurately aligned or going into each other. So there's no problem in that. Only time it causes a problem is when you're using Reactor and doing animation. That's when things can get a bit hairy. So um, this is what we have so far. In comparison to our original photo here, you can see we've created the outer shell. So now go ahead and select the, get the select and move tool again and just click, hold down shift, click and drag forward. Okay again, mess about with it. So I'm going to reduce the height to something, maybe that size. I'm going to increase the width. So bear in mind, whatever you're doing is taking place on all for viewport so i've created that i'm just going to take it to the top maybe around here 
and then I'll probably do the same for the bottom. So remember, hold down shift, click and drag towards whichever direction you want to take it. And there you go. That's what we have. So even without completing the actual object that we're trying to make, we've already got something there that makes quite a lot of sense. If you had to render this, uh, let me just hit render quickly and see what comes up. And there you go. So as soon as you render that, we've already made something, but let's continue anyway. Go ahead and select whichever shape you want to duplicate, but I'll be using the bottom one. So you better off following me. Um, hold down shift, click and drag, just take your high a little bit. So we're gonna move it again. Reduce the size again, uh, you know, that way. Reduce the width, make it quite thin and increase the height. I think something, something like that would be good. So now we're trying to make the front side of it. So just bring it forward. And from here, hold down shift again, click and drag. Now don't worry if the size is a bit wrong. You just copy it. When you're done, hold down control, select the other, uh, the other shape or the other object and then just control it this way. So you can control the size of both. And this makes sure that you've got them accurately or pretty much the same size. So when you look close, that's what we have. Maybe, maybe move that over a little bit and leave a tiny gap just so, so it looks like an actual cabin. And I think select both of them and just move them down slightly. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And I select any of these uh, front parts here. Just hold down shift, drag forward, say okay. Mess about with the size. Now we're gonna create the handles, make it quite small, quite short as well. And simply drag it into the two sections. You can either do it one by one by copying and pasting it on both, or you can simply remove what we created before, copy both of this, hold down shift, drag both of them down here. So then we know the handle sitting at the exact same place uh, as the top one. So um, now if you look at it, we've pretty much made um, the whole object within just a few minutes. Obviously this has materials. This doesn't, but don't worry, we'll get to the material part later on. Um, let me just try and um, grade the whole object so we can see it properly. I'll get the material editor. Maybe I'll just drop this in there. And yeah. So that's what we've created. Don't mind the pink outlines, it's just the edges. When you render, they won't appear. So this is just to help you see what you're making. And there you go, we've created our object within a few minutes and it looks perfect. I think it looks better than the original product. So um, I might get this for my mom when it comes out. But yeah, all right, thank you for tuning into this lesson. I look forward to seeing you on part two, where we'll be using a different method to create something similar to this, probably another cabinet. So, all right, thanks again, and uh, bye for now.